I'm Adinrin Ray Obasari. I'm a cardiology fellow from Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. And um, I'm here at the International Academy of Cardiology and I'm giving a talk on uh, the relationship between fascicular blocks and mitral regurgitation. So it's a pretty interesting uh, topic. Um, left bundle branch blocks have been shown to be associated with mitral regurgitation. And uh, mitral regurgitation itself is important uh, because of its prognostic implications. Um, s several studies, uh, particularly in the 90s, have shown that uh, mitral regurgitation is associated with uh, increased mortality risk. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter the degree of mitral regurgitation. So we've also uh, found in previous studies that uh, bundle branch blocks are associated with mitral regurgitation, um, particularly because of the synchrony of the, the left ventricle, I mean the, the ventricles. Um, so in our study, we looked at about 300 uh, patients uh, in different groups, uh, uh, left anterior fascicular blocks, uh, left posterior fascicular blocks, and we compared this with another group with no fascicular blocks. Um, all our patients had background uh, right bundle branch blocks because uh, isolated left posterior fascicular blocks is rare and usually shares the same etiology and pathogenesis as right bundle branch blocks. So our groups were e pretty evenly divided in the 300. Uh, we excluded patients with uh, other significant valvular disease or prostatic, prostatic mitral valves. Um, so in our study, we found that um, uh, fascicular blocks combined um, were associated with an increased uh, prevalence of mitral regurgitation about 65% of the time. Um, um, we also found that uh, in terms of the severity of the mitral regurgitation, it was higher in those who had fascicular blocks. Uh, they had more moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. This was more of a numerical difference. Um, it did not reach statistical significance, um, probably because of our numbers. Um, um, and then in terms of our confounding factors, uh, we looked at uh, factors such as age, uh, wall motion abnormalities, atrial fibrillation or flutter, um, ejection fraction, acute myocardial infarctions. Um, we found that ejection fraction did differ in the group with and in, in comparing groups with fascicular blocks versus those without. Um, and it was a p-value of 0.04. Um, which is similar to our p-value with the presence of mitral regurgitation. The other demographic factors that we mentioned and clinical factors, there was no significance between both groups. And um, later on to, to see if, uh, we checked to see if fascicular blocks predict, continue to predict uh, mitral regurgitation in patients um, with fascicular blocks. And uh, on multivariate analysis with those factors mentioned earlier, it was found that it did still predict uh, uh, the presence of mitral regurgitation, and it, this was also found to be statistically significant.